What's up YouTube, this is Sean, I am back and in this video we are going to do some work on the Ninja Turtle shell. And here is a little sneak peek at what I've got done so far. So uh, let's just get right into it, why don't we? Now I'm going to be using a couple of sheets of floor mats. I figured why not since this is the right thickness and they're easy to find. You can find them at Harbor Freight, that's where I usually get them. You can also get them at um, Academy and even Costco, anywhere that sells exercise equipment. And they're fairly cheap too. Now Harbor Freight sells them for really cheap, but it's really bad quality. Um, you could use the good stuff from like TNT Cosplay Supply. Uh, I really like using their product, but I'm using what I have on hand because I've been out of the game for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Now some of these pieces do require an outward angle cut. But I went ahead and cut everything with a straight straight cut. But I'll cut my angle cuts here a little bit. It just makes things a little bit easier. Now you want to start off with a sharp blade. And I sharpen my blade maybe every four to five cuts. That's when it starts to get dull. So I need to cut some outward angle cuts. But I'm going to flip the pattern over and cut with an inward angle cut. That way when I flip it right side up, I have an outward angle cut. You can also do it while you're cutting cutting it out that would actually been easier but figured you know what I'll show you guys how to do it this way and here's another thing that I like to do is if I have two matching pieces or mirrored pieces I'll hold them together like that and then I'll just apply the glue together you know instead of doing it twice I'm doing it once but I'm doing two pieces at the same time and I'm using barge contact cement and I got that applicator from Home Depot in the plumbing section I just swapped off the dauber for a smaller one which I got from Tandy so yeah I'll leave some links in the description now it's time to attach all these pieces together now the outer pattern might look different than what's on the template because I did make some changes you know when you attach them together it's all the same I just had to make some tweaks to the pattern so that way it makes it easier to print out and now that I got all the uh, middle pieces put together it's time to attach the outer brim which is a little bit tedious but you know it's feasible you can do it you just gotta line it up from the surface since the thickness of each foam is different because of the outward angle cut the edges are a little bit wider than the uh, straight cut so yeah I mean if you don't get it perfect I mean, I'm not gonna judge you as long as you don't judge me you know it's just cosplay bro just saying now that uh, I got both pieces assembled, it's time to attach them or marry them down the middle. Uh, this part is a little tricky because it's a pretty large piece, but you know, you got to make sure you press all the edges together. It's probably like the largest piece I've ever made. But it is a back piece for like a turtle, I mean a ninja turtle. So yeah, which is kind of cool, you know. Now that we got the shell pretty much fully assembled I'm gonna go and draw a line around the outside I'm gonna take a sharpie and just you know draw a line that's about an inch in I mean, you can do whatever you want but I think this looks good then I'm gonna take this razor blade with a tape that's supposed to act as a stopper because you don't want to cut all the way through because we're trying to make a V groove cut and I'm not actually cutting in an angle for the first round, for the first cut. I'm actually cutting straight. And then for the second cut, I'm going to cut it in an angle, which is going to connect with the other one. And if you did it right, which I didn't, but if you did it right, you'd be able to pull it out. Now I had to go in there and dig it out. Now I'm going to apply some contact cement to the, uh, to the valley cut that I just made. And wait for it to dry. And once it dries, you know, then I'm going to go in there and press it all in together. And then you're going to have this tapered edge, which, you know, looks really cool. It looks a lot better than it being flat. So, yeah. So now I'm going to assemble the chest piece, which this is the, uh, the, the two upper chest piece. And then I'm going to attach the two abdominal area which is this two pieces right here on the outer edges of this piece right here is 
an outward angle cut so whenever I attach the chest piece to the abdominal piece it's going to have like an inward bevel so remember when you have an outward angle cut you'll you'll get a inward bevel and if you join two inward angle cuts you get an outward bevel I hope that makes sense now that I got the um, the two pieces assembled it's time to attach them down the middle then you have a chest piece or a front piece that looks like this now I'm using six millimeter EVA foam from TNT cosplay supply you can use floor mats but you know I feel like this is a comfortable thickness to wear up front so I mean it's really up to you it's what you got here's another front piece that I made using scrap craft foam that I couldn't use for anything else and here is a female version of the front piece which um, the assembly process is pretty much the same and the template is also included now here are the pieces for the elbows and the knee pad I'm using some quarter inch floor mats for the knee pad I just wanted to see what it looked like I had some laying around so why not you know I figure I show you guys how to assemble this using the cheaper scrap stuff so it's fairly easy and then I also tried experimenting and I used the thicker floor mat and I think I like the 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 way it looked using the thicker floor mat now it's time to strap these things up I got some elastic I got this heavy duty stapler and some hot glue now from uh, my previous experience hot glue doesn't seem to want to work all that great so I got to use a stapler to reinforce it what, what I'm doing here is I'm cutting off a piece of the um, the uh, knee pad which is going to be my elbow pad and here's the downfall of using floor mats because you got to go through and sand areas that you're going to to glue like on the texture surface you got to sand it down or your glue is not going to stick I'm using a lighter to cauterize the edges of the elastic and then I'm going to apply some hot glue and then clamp it down which I probably didn't show I don't think I showed it but see I don't think the hot glue is strong enough to hold it together so I'm gonna use this heavy-duty stapler to make sure everything is like locked in the only downfall with using the stapler is that you have this these uh, prickly thingies on this side which I'm going to squeeze and glue some some foam over it now you don't want the the, the picky side on the inside because then that's gonna bother you when you wear it right here I'm using the thicker floor mat I did cut it out trimmed it down a little bit and also beveled the the uh, the edges the corners to give it that you know cool look and and I actually like this better but I'm still gonna use the the other one that I made this one now we're gonna be squad playing so I gotta make four sets of this and uh, I'm, not, I'm not gonna throw it away I mean it looks good it's just not as good as this one it's the new one you know what I'm saying now the only problem is I won't be able to staple it down so I'm gonna have to rely on the hot glue to hold it together and I'm just gonna take hot glue with me to the, to the conventions because I'm pretty sure these are gonna fall apart here's another variation that I made maybe I can staple these or maybe I can come up with some buttons I don't know I'm gonna have to do like an update video once I get it all figured out but right now I, I don't have a clue now it's time to start painting the foam I'm gonna start by heat sealing the foam with a heat gun and then I'm going to apply uh, Mod Podge as my sealer you can use Plasti Dip but um, when it's cold you can't really work out inside in the shop it you know you don't want to spray that Plasti Dip inside so I'm using Mod Podge and I think it takes just the same amount of time to dry but it's way less toxic I don't even think it's toxic um, right now I'm wrapping the the paintbrush in between coats because I don't want the, the Mod Podge to dry my brush I use this brush over and over and now I'm putting a coat of green and using a hairdryer to accelerate the drying process 
Um, you can use whatever color. I mean, I mean you got to make four of them, right? And right now it looks like crap. That's only because I'm experimenting. And I have no clue what I'm doing. But uh, I know I have three other chances to screw this up. And here's my second chance to screw it up. But at the end, I think it turned out really cool. I mean, you know, it's whatever. I mean, it doesn't have to look uniform. They all, they all look different. Now here's a front piece that I just applied some dark brown or just real brown and then I took that brown thinned it down and added a little bit of black to it and I'm feeding it through my airbrush and just doing a a shading to it and um, just to give it a little bit of contrast and you can see how much cooler it looks now I did try this with paintbrush because I know you can do it with a paintbrush it just doesn't look as good I mean, it's possible, but I'm not a painter, so, I mean, don't judge me, alright? So that's the paint version, and this is like the airbrushed version. I did trim the, uh, the cod area and the armpit area to make it a little more comfortable when I wear it. And uh, here is the uh, female version, which I used a lighter brown. I think it was called mocha. I don't, I don't know. But you can use whatever color you want. I'm just saying this. This is now. It's time to strap these pieces together. I got this vinyl, but you know, instead of sewing it, I decided to glue the edges together. If you don't have a sewing machine, this is an option. Um, I personally think it would have been quicker if I just sewed it up together. But I was just probably too lazy to pull out the sewing machine. But yeah, I mean, you can even do it without hemming up the edges. But, you know, I'm using sandpaper to scuff the, uh, the, the paint, the surface. And applying some contact cement here, so that way I can glue it to the shell. And then I put on some snap-on button, uh, which I picked up from Walmart. I'll leave a link in the description, so that way you can pick up uh, some button making kit, just like this. It's really helpful. It's real easy, and it looks better, you know. And I use some foams for like the trap area, and this is what it looks like so far. I know I gotta tweak it just a little bit. Now the tracksuit is a little loose on me, so I'm gonna have to go back and and do some sewing on it. But uh, yeah, so far so groovy. I mean, I hope you're digging what I'm cooking, cause. I think that's how it goes. It's been a while since I said that. I'm gonna have to watch my old videos and see how how it goes. Yeah, I mean, if this is what you're into, I mean, if you're really into this kind of stuff, then check the links in the description down below, and you'll find the templates to this, and you you can make your own squad play. When I mean squad play is like when you're cosplaying with three or more people. It's not a real word. I actually just made that up, but I coined it. Just saying. Anyways, like, comment, and uh, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.